So hello, my name is Alina, and together with my colleague Bogdan, we will present today the topic called large-scale deep learning for map making. So uh, Bogdan and I both work at LNAV. I am part of the map analyst team, and he is part of the AI team. The problem that we want to discuss and solve today is that uh, manually identifying map features from images is very time consuming. Why? Because, well, imagine the fact that you have a bunch of dash cam images and you want to add from them all the turn restrictions. To do this, you will have to go through all of them and search for the sign that you're interested in. And even though you may find that sign, that sign could already exist in OSM. So if you decide, I don't know, to add also the traffic lights, you will have to go through the same process once again. So this takes a lot of time. The challenge is to solve this problem by uh, creating a pipeline that can identify these uh, features automatically and at scale. The solution that we did at Telenav to solve this problem consists of the following steps. The first step was to gather the images. We, have, we gathered the images using the OpenStreetCam app. I don't know how many of you have heard of it. It's a free and open source app which records dash cam images. And uh, here is a sample of the images that we have recorded. And to give you a sense of the amount of data that we currently have, uh, here is a heat map with the coverage in the Berlin area. At present, in OpenStreetCam, we have about 146 million images and about 667,000 distinct kilometers. So the first step was to gather the images. The next step was uh, to create the tech data set. What this means is if you have an image, you want in that image all the signs that you consider of interest to be tagged. For example, one ways, turn restrictions, signposts. To do this, a lot of manual work needed to be done. Uh, this was done by my team using a tool that we have developed to support the tagging. And let's see how this uh, tool looks like. So you have this image. You want in this image to tag all the signs that are important for navigation, for example, traffic lights, one way, no entry signs. To do this, you will have to draw a bounding box as big as the sign, uh, select the sign category, and validate it. The tool is very intuitive, in my opinion, because you have the possibility to validate detections or manual tagging to invalidate them, to resize a certain sign if the bounding box was not correct. Here in the bar, you can see all the detections or the manual tagging that were done in uh, the, the trip that is shown here, and also the detections and the tagged uh, images that are in the current photo are highlighted. So using this uh, tool, we labeled about 70,000 images from the United States, and we added about 220,000 labels. The most important classes that we tagged were one-way turn restrictions, signposts, turn lanes, stop and yield signs. And in the chart, you can see the progress that we did from December up until now. We have about 160 signs that have at least one text, uh, one tagged uh, instance, and about 42 signs that have at least 1,000 uh, instances tagged. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm uh, Bogdan. I work in the uh, AI team, where we mainly do machine learning for uh, computer vision and image processing. And I'm going to continue uh, today's presentation. So, Alina, just talk talk to you about how we started by uh, we started this. Uh, 
with this pipeline by first gathering a lot of images. We are constantly adding to those images using OpenStreetCamp, then creating a tag data set, right? And now the, the next logical step is to create an AI system which leverages these two parts, right? The, the, these images and the tag data set, which then will be able to recognize those traffic signs in other images, like in all of the, the images that we have gathered without the need for human intervention. So this is step number three, right? Creating an AI system that can detect real signs and images. We have built this in uh, our dedicated AI team, on which I am part of. Of course, we have used deep learning for object detection in order to build this, because the talk is called uh, large-scale deep learning and on large-scale if clauses. But we have used uh, deep learning because it's the current state of the art in um, in this uh, problem, which is conceptually called object detection, because you have to like detect different stuff in images, in our case, traffic signs. So while building this, we have gone through multiple iterations, through various deep learning frameworks and architectures. We have started with a two-stage solution built in Cafe, which is a deep learning framework. We have then gone to, to using a single stage solution mainly uh, named single shot detector and lately we have gone to an architecture called VertinaNet which is the current state of the art in, uh, in object detection, right? Okay, so we have built this and because we're engineers and we like to measure stuff, let's see some numbers. We got to about 92% accuracy on 55 different classes of signs. And uh, uh, as far as infrastructure is concerned, we are able to run this whole uh, pipeline in about 1.3 seconds per image on an NVIDIA V100 GPUs because all of these, uh, all of these deep learning uh, algorithms need to be run on GPUs in order to be able to massively parallelize all the information necessary. Of course, if needed, we can just add more uh, worker nodes and more GPUs in our pipeline to process more and more images. So let's see how uh, a trip which has been run through uh, the detections looks like. And you can just see a lot of speed limits being detected, a lot of yield signs, a lot of traffic lights, turn restrictions, and so on and so forth, right? And this actually enables us, if we have like hundreds of thousands of uh, images in Milan, just to take the ones which, for example, have uh, like maybe turn restriction in them, right? So as you can see, Right there, so this enables us not to uh, not to look through them manually, but only look at the ones which are interest to ourselves, and that's nice and that's good, and uh, th this shortens the time needed to add those map features in the map. But the, the questions come: Can we do more? Can we sh efficientize more uh, more uh, this process? And the the question and the answer is well, of course, yes. Because we started with this task of being able to automatically filter images with specific signs in them, right? Because we don't want to manually review hundreds of thousands of images because one, well, it takes a lot of time and two, it, 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 we could do it faster. So we, we believe that we have managed to do this so by using this AI system. But what we have also discovered when manually adding these features into a map it, is that Detecting the affected way ID of a particular sign, for example, you have a speed limit in an, in an image. Uh, well, when you added that in JASM in OpenStreetMap, you have to say, well, look, this image and this sign affects this particular way ID, right? So, and then you have to look whether or not that particular way ID already has this information added in them, right? So, this takes a lot of time, and we wanted to see if we can let, like, automate it such that we can already match the detection to a way ID and we can automatically compared with, with SOSM to shorten the time even more, right? So that's, that's exactly what we have tried, we have tried to, to do. Okay, so step number four, localize the detection. What does this mean conceptually? It is to be able to compute the detected road sign GPS location, right? So let's look at an example to, to like better understand what you're talking about. Let's assume you have this image in which you have detected those traffic lights that are far away in the distance. In order to match it, Ulterior, at an ulterior point to that to one particular street, you need to know the GPS location, right? So as you can see from this image, signs are observable in images from 50, 100, 200 meters away, right? So you need to compute that particular offset from the car GPS location to the image GPS location, right? So you need to take in the image location upon this point, you need to correctly localize maybe a stop sign in that particular intersection, right? So how do we do this? Now we're not using deep learning or machine learning here because we don't need it, right? It's not 
It's not like a one tool to solve them all. What we use is like a simple system which takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of input. First of all, we know the traffic sign bounding box location and size in an image, right? Because we have detected it, we are able to localize it and see how big that particular traffic sign is in the image. Second of all, we know the real life dimensions of the signs because a stop sign is like, uh, like a sort of traffic light has a pretty standard size like, and dimensions throughout a particular region and that, uh, and that is like public information, we already know it. And third of all, we know the camera parameters because each, each one of our iPhones or an Android phones has a different camera with different camera parameters which affect how images are distorted, like how objects are distorted in that images. Now, if you take all of these three stuff, you sprinkle a bit of math over them and, and then you can actually compute that particular offset and compute the GPS location. And well, that's nice and that's good and that helps so, like knowing the GPS location, right? But this is the moment when the, the, the large scale comes into, into stuff. And this is the, the moment when you realize that you need to cluster multiple detections together. What does this mean conceptually? Is that we needed a system which, needs, which can aggregate the detections which refer to the same physical sign. Now remember, we do have uh, tens of millions of photos in throughout the world. That means that on the majority of the streets, we do have multiple streets, multiple trips going on the same street, right? That makes sense. So what this means is that, imagine this, uh, this, uh, this uh, situation in which you have like a particular detection uh, being, uh, being detected there, like a maybe a stop sign, but then what you realize is that you have multiple trips on that, uh, on that, uh, on that uh, way ID. So maybe you have multiple detections, but which in reality is the same physical sign, right? And then maybe you have another bunch of trips which detect like a different physical stop sign on an intersection nearby. Now what you could do is review every single one of those, uh, of those uh, detections, but that, that's pretty inefficient. If I have added the speed limit once, I don't want to look like at, at 100 images of the same speed limit, right? So what you need to do is cluster this and say, look, these six are a single cluster, those six are another cluster. Now, in order to do this, we, we used a, a simple clustering algorithm from sklearn called dbscan in which we which it which can cluster those detections based on GPS location, the heading of the sign, and the type of that particular sign. Right now, and after you do this, the good part is that you can compute the cluster centroid, which is basically the average uh, GPS lo location, like averaged from the members of that particular cluster. Why is that helpful? Well, because as you can see, when we compute the GPS location of that particular cluster of, of the, each detection, each has a bit of error, right? Because the system is not perfect, it has a few meters of error, right, from the real sign. But when you average them out together, the error gets reduced and you get to a more approximate location of the real physical sign. So at the end of the day, you're left with just this cluster centroids so, such that you can um, you can look only at those. And of course, the situation is not as simple in reality because you have tons of thousands of detections, each clustered together, very uh, close in nature, and then you need to do something like this. But we do, we, the, the algorithm that sklearn and dbscan manages to do this really, really quickly. So we cluster them, and that's fine. That reduces the time needed to, uh, because it, we don't have to review hundreds of duplicate detection. And here comes step number six, which means, and we have talked about this right in the beginning, is to match the cluster centroid to a particular street. And conceptually, what this means is to determine which street a road sign affects, right? Because we can, if you can, can do it automatically, we don't have to do it manually. Because remember, in a, like in an image, you can see maybe signs from parallel roads or for adjacent per perpendicular roads, or maybe signs from like a bridge over you. Like if you do, if and that and manually mapping, manually doing this. And reviewing that sign in in a JASM or something like that, like it takes a lot of time, right? So upon this point, you do have the cluster and the cluster centric computed for you. And then what you can do is just match it to a particular road sign, right? Because you have the GPS location, you know it's heading, you know it's close to the street, and you can then just match it to a street. Now, why is this important? Why is it important that you can match it to a street? 
Well, very simply, step number seven, in which you can compare against the OSM information, right? Because oh, in an OSM, there are already millions of turn restrictions and millions of speed limits, right? So we don't want to waste time reviewing anything that's already in OSM, right? So if you could just filter out the information which already exists, that actually reduces the time needed to add all the turn restriction in Milan, right? If you don't have to look at the hundreds of thousands which are already added. So up until, up until this point, what we're left with is that with these, these detections, with these clusters, like let's say they're all like speed limits, we know on which way each one of them, those effects, you don't have to do this manually, and we can also, so we can look at the tags on those particular way IDs and say, look, this speed limit already exists in OSM, the information is already there, so boom, we don't have to look at them, 40% of the reviewing time, right? So this is, this is pretty neat, and this allows us to reduce the time needed to complete a map uh, like to a, large, to a large degree. Okay, so uh, that's all for me. I'm going to pass it to Alina now. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's make a small recap with what I've discussed so far. So uh, the first step was to gather the images. The next one was to create the tag data set. Well, and then uh, train the algorithm with the manual tagging that we, we have done to detect row signs, localize them, cluster them, and match the cent rate to the street that it affects. The uh, last step is to run the open street map compare that Bogdan talked about to see only the detection of the signs that are not currently in open street map. Uh, we have open sourced everything to engage the community to build up better results. Uh, we open our, our uh, data sets. You can find them on our GitHub. We also open source our networks. We train weights. You can download the algorithm, train it, and run it on your own images. The tagging tool is available for everyone in the community. All detections can be viewed, validated, and invalidated on the OpenStreetCam. You have two options. You have a trip mode, which means that in a trip you will see all the detection on all the manual tagging that has been done, or a sign view, where you can see from all the images a certain sign that has been detected or tagged. We also currently run a competition on CodaLab. Uh, so the members are the community I'm being challenged to create a better solution than we did. And uh, anyone who's interested can join. And if you beat our score, you will win the $10,000. Uh, our future work involves detecting more classes, of course, image segmentation, and OCR. That's it. Thanks. Um, what's about uh, the local mappers if they make a map uh, which is up to date and then other mappers look at the pictures which are old and bring it back to the old state then the local mapper has to drive two times 30 kilometers in order to see uh, is there change? No, it didn't change, so I change it back. Then the next one comes, sees the pictures, makes the old state. Uh, so the local mapper, uh, there is uh, the day where he will give up uh, 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 contributing to your open state map. Okay, so uh, when so when we are running this AI algorithm on images to detect new signs, we are always trying because we're all or like we are constantly adding uh, like new images in OpenStreetCam. We are all we are always trying to 
uh, make detections on like up to date images which have been taken like like in recent like not like 5 years ago so that so that all of detections are up to date and we don't get to the like very valid situation that you have uh, put so that's how we that's how we manage it okay um, uh, th thank you for your presentation i would like to ask you whether you um you think that the tools are related especially to augmented reality so um Photogrammetry and structure for motion, or just parallaxis, parallax effects, could affect the, your approach. Or even you already evaluated pros and cons uh, for the, these kind of techniques to localize something from a 2D image in 3D. Okay, so uh, so currently for localization, uh, we, we do have like some. Um, Maybe it's like some ideas on how to improve the localization because all of our images come from like a, a wide variety of, of uh, phones and wireless cameras and so on. So we do have like some problems with it, but we haven't invested uh, like currently that much time into adding those those like complex uh, like algorithms that you have uh, mentioned. But that, that's certainly an idea that we plan to explore in, in the future. Thank you very much. Um. Do you actually propose to uh, map individual signs, or do you um, transpose your data back to the street? I mean, a speed limit is a sign which is at a specific position. Are you actually proposing to map the sign and map your data or your position back to that specific sign, or are you actually proposing to map that back to a certain um, part of a street? Sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh, what we do is that we localize the sign. We see which road affects. We compare if that information already exists in OpenStreetMap. And if it's not, we show them and we see, okay, look, here is a speed limit. Check it. See it, if it's correct. And if it is, manually add it into the, the map. Because also in, in OSM, for example, for specific type of signs, for, for example, speed limits, you just add the information to the way ID that it affects. So you, you don't. Uh, it is a, yeah, 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 you can map both. Of yeah, that. Really? Okay. I, I, really? I, okay. I do because I, ha I originally added only the speed limits to okay. the streets, but in the end, when you have asymmetric speed limits on roads, it's getting very. Um, in not all non obvious where speed limits start in which direction. So starting to map individual signs and their exact location okay. makes it much more easy to later validate if your speed limits yeah, are okay. correct. So uh, because we do have the localized detection, we may, maybe could like do both of them. So but we started from the beginning with this idea, but it can be adapted to like maybe what you're proposing. Um, 